I'm uh, Greg Schultz. I'm the Chief Technology Officer from White River Technologies. Uh, we're a small high-tech business located in New Hampshire, um, oriented around geophysical research and development for Department of Defense, uh, energy, and environmental applications. So our company was founded by a group of scientists and engineers uh, primarily to, to continue to do research on um, detection technology for munitions and other concealed hazards and threats um, that are of interest to uh, various organizations, um, government, and uh, commercial entities. The primary application that we're trying to address and, and have been addressing is um, the detection of explosive hazards, and those range from um, uh, unexploded ordnance that have been dropped during training exercises in the U.S. on military ranges to uh, weapons that have been used in active conflicts both uh, in North America but also overseas and other areas. Um, they could be recent conflicts or conflicts from long ago like uh, finding um, World War II munitions in, in Germany, places that have had those munitions there for many years and they've recently been uncovered as a threat somewhere or lands being cleared and they want to uh, secure the land and make sure that there aren't any threats for further construction or turning real estate over. So traditionally metal detectors have been the most popular method used and those have been used, you know, I think before even World War I around that time. Um, they were being used to detect metal or metal objects that might be associated with, with munitions threats and landmines in particular. And um, we generally use the same type of technology, but now we've integrated things like radar that can uh, penetrate with waves and detect at a much higher resolution. Um, we're also combining different methods, uh, optical methods, uh, thermal imagery with radar, with advanced metal detection technology. And one of the things that our company is really working on is, is what we call advanced electromagnetic sensors. These are actually really kind of fancy metal detectors now. Instead of, um, instead of sensing in sort of one dimension as you traverse the ground and make a map, we now have three-dimensional systems that can illuminate targets from uh, all three directions, all three orthogonal directions. And what that does is it, it sets up a response in the object that we can receive and then analyze and try to understand more what the three-dimensional shape of the object is, what its orientation is. Uh, sometimes we can tell what the wall thickness of the object is. But most importantly, this allows us to discriminate uh, objects that look more like a munitions threat and less like clutter. Because the real problem is going after all, this, all these clutter items and the, and the cost and time that it takes. And so our problem isn't necessarily detecting the objects that are threats, but not detecting or trying to rule out all the, uh, all the clutter objects that we don't want to investigate. There's a lot of um, integration of both hardware and software, developing, um, starting with prototypes and then developing the software from algorithmic stage, um, learning what the sensor responses are and how to best use those to detect objects in an efficient way so that we're not also detecting a bunch of clutter and creating false alarms that, um, that take a lot of time and effort to investigate. So we try to, to take the sensor responses, develop algorithms that are tailored for an application in order to um, really efficiently go after the targets of interest and then also um, using some new methods, characterize them generally in three dimensions instead of previous one or two dimensional type of representations. A lot of the areas have mixed munition types now. They've had multiple conflicts and uh, some of the older conflicts have landmines and then layered on top of that you'll have newer airdrop munitions, cluster bombs. Uh, landmines in particular, a real problem, uh, humanitarian demining and, and demining in general in Southeast Asia um, from Vietnam and other conflicts. And there are areas where there's literally hundreds of thousands of, of landmines that persist and so they're constantly trying to clear those areas and make them safe. The tricky thing about improvised devices in particular are that they really don't have any particular shape or form that you can go after and so you have to really be adaptive in your processing and also your hardware um, to sort of address the challenges as they come. 
you know, there is an international community, not only for demining, but also for unexploded ordnance and other types of munition hazards to address those. Oftentimes, they're nonprofit organizations, non-governmental organizations um, that are, you know, working in areas with, with local people to, to not only address the, the actual problem of finding and uncovering munitions, but also uh, setting up the regulations, clearing the land, and and uh, working with the people to educate them and organize um, to help kind of uh, solve the problem more as a community um, where it's, it's not just uh, a foreign entity coming in doing operations but working with local people to understand the problem. So I'm a geophysicist, uh, a, a physicist that, that studies things under the ground. And so naturally I was inclined to look for things that you couldn't see necessarily. Um, so we use electromagnetic methods that don't really lend themselves to an optical display. Um, and so I was, I was working on larger scale geophysical problems and um, started working on humanitarian demining um, as one of my early projects right out of graduate school. And it became a really interesting, not only because the technical problem was interesting, but because of the potential benefit you know, to society that this could create. Um, and it, I thought it was a really cool way that I could contribute in a very narrow field in developing technology that could ultimately be used to help people or clean up land and clear things for people. So um, that has sort of evolved from landmine detection into unexploded ordnance to a larger spectrum of concealed threats that we, we now have technologies and capability to, uh, to go after. You know, when you're young, you have ideas about what you might do or what you're interested in, and, and the more you learn, you sort of become more focused and um, you start working with people and get interested in new things, and it just takes the path that it takes.